Hi, and welcome to the next video in fluid mechanics. Last time, we built the conservation of momentum equation for fluid mechanics, also commonly referred to as the Navier-Stokes equations. In reality, they're just a fancy version of F equals MA applied to fluids, and each direction of motion has one equation, meaning there are three in total. Notice in our building of the equation, we made one major assumption, that flow was incompressible. Today, we learn all about the assumptions you make in fluid mechanics to simplify the equations and make them more approachable. Even though the conservation equations are rooted in basic physical ideas, the equations themselves are pretty intense. Lots of derivatives, some of them second order, and multiple variables in each equation. These make up four equations total, one for conservation of mass and three for conservation of momentum, and there are technically four unknowns that we can solve for, specifically the velocity field, U, V, and W, and the pressure. You may find yourself confused and wondering, how the heck do you solve these things? And you'd be in pretty good company, because it's something that stumps scientists even today. These equations are famous for their complexity, and solving them has become one of the well-known millennium problems. To solve them in their entirety, we generally need computers. But if we want to do basic solutions on pen and paper, we need to make some assumptions. Making assumptions removes terms in the equations that make them easier to solve overall. Let's jump right into the major assumptions, talk about what terms they impact, and when you can make them. First, there is the incompressible assumption, something you've seen in our conservation equation building already. Physically, this means that the density is a constant and the fluid cannot be compressed. Functionally, this means that derivatives with only rho in it go to zero, and rho can generally pop out of the derivatives that have other variables. To make this assumption, you are generally working with liquids, which are safe to assume incompressible. If you're working with slow-moving gases, which means the velocities in your flow field are much lower than the speed of sound for that fluid, you're also good to use it. Next, we have the two-dimensional assumption. Physically, this assumption means the flow changes only in two directions, and functionally that means derivatives with respect to that third dimension are inherently zero. It's very common that the third dimension is z, so usually it's safe to assume unless told otherwise. Paired with the 2D assumption is the two-component assumption, or 2C. Physically, this means flow only has two velocity components, and the velocity in that third dimension is zero. You can make the 2D and 2C assumptions when you have channels or sometimes boundary layers, generally flows that are very wide in one dimension compared to the others. You also generally need laminar flow to make this assumption, which we'll learn about more when we talk about turbulence. The next major common assumption is the steady assumption. Steady, in the context of fluids, means unchanging in time, so we can set the time derivatives to zero. This is a super common one and occurs whenever you have a flow that boundary conditions or the forcing are not changing in time. For example, if you have a pump driving a pipe flow with a constant pressure, the flow generally will not change no matter what time you look at it. You could walk away for an hour or maybe even a day and come back and it would be doing the same thing. Conversely, we have the fully developed assumption for when things don't vary in space. Most commonly this means flow is not changing in the x-direction, which is the streamwise direction typically. This assumption only applies to the velocity field, so derivatives of velocity with respect to x are zero. It is possible with the fully developed assumption to have a pressure that changes in time. It's quite common for pressure-driven flow, where there is a pressure gradient dp dx, but the flow itself is fully developed and not changing in the x direction. This happens in enclosed flows specifically, like pipes and channels. Enclosing the flow limits the flow's ability to grow, which drives it to become developed and balanced in the streamwise direction. 
Also, generally you need flow to be laminar to be instantaneously fully developed. The next major assumptions deal with the forces that act on the fluid. The first one is that flow is inviscid. Physically, inviscid means that the viscosity forces are not important or low relative to other forces in the problem. Functionally, this means assuming viscosity goes to zero. This assumption must be applied carefully because viscosity is quite important in lots of problems even though they might, it might not seem like it. Generally, you make this assumption when you have a high momentum flow, which means it can have a high velocity or be very large. When we discuss non-dimensional numbers in another video, we will discuss the Reynolds number which applies here. Also, you need to be far away from a boundary. Boundaries are where boundary layers occur, which is caused by viscosity. In aerodynamics, we use this assumption in cases called potential flow, where much of the lift and drag on bodies can be calculated making the inviscid assumption. Next, we have the no body forces assumption, which is fairly self-explanatory. In these cases, all the body forces are neg negligible and set to zero. It's quite common and occurs in most flows. Notably, you can't make this assumption when you have density gradients, multiple fluids in your flow, multiple phases in your flow, like liquids and gases of the same fluid, liquid surfaces, like on top of the ocean, and there are many more. And finally, a common assumption that is made at the outset of fluids analysis is that you are working with a Newtonian fluid. Physically, this means that the fluid viscosity is constant and doesn't depend on the stress it's feeling. It's called Newtonian because Newton's law of viscosity defines this constant behavior. When you have a fluid that breaks this assumption, it's called a non-Newtonian fluid. Notable non-Newtonian fluids are ketchup, blood, shampoo, soaps, and many others. Lucky for us, and humans in general, air and water are both safely Newtonian. In our derivations, we have essentially already assumed Newtonian fluids because we've used Newton's law of viscosity without realizing it in our conservation of momentum building. All of these make up the major assumptions that you will commonly see in fluid mechanics. In practice, you will use them all the time, and often you need them to be able to solve problems. You will find yourself searching for which assumptions apply to your problem to be able to help you out. Consider the full x-direction conservation of momentum equation in its entirety. Now, let's make a series of common assumptions. First, we assume steady, so we can get rid of the time derivative. Second, we assume incompressible, which is an assumption that we already made in the derivation that allows density to go out front. Fully developed lets us cross out some DDX terms of velocity. 2D, 2C assumptions let us get rid of Z derivatives and the W velocity. Last, we assume no body forces and chop off that last term. This leaves us with a much more approachable and solvable function that still accurately describes some fluid flows. You will often be relieved at how simple an assumption can make your problem. And that's it. Let's review. Today, we introduce the major assumptions in fluid mechanics that are necessary in solving the conservation of mass and momentum equations to get to know the unknowns of velocity and pressure. Incompressible means density is constant, and it's for liquids and slow gases. Two-dimensional and two-component means nothing changes in Z, and there is no W velocity, common for channels and boundary layers. Steady means no change in time of any quantity, which happens when your boundary conditions and forcing are constant. Fully developed says the velocity doesn't change in X, most seen in closed flows like pipes and channels. The inviscid assumption means you can ignore viscosity completely, and the Newtonian assumption means viscosity is constant. Lastly, there are no body forces in the problem, you can easily set them to zero. In practice, 
you will regularly make use of all these assumptions. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.